Hey and welcome to this tutorial on 5 useful Maya bonus tools to know about. The first tool I want to talk about is the Bound and Box Scale Bonus Tool. Follow the tutorial linked in the description to easily install the bonus tools from Maya. You might have noticed that once you've frozen the transforms, it can be difficult to scale an object to a specific size. So this is a very useful tool to do just that. Here we have an object and we don't know the size of this object. As if you look at the attributes, you can see the scale is set to one. But if we look at the grid, we can see this object is larger than one unit of size. So what we can do is head up to bonus tools, modify, bound and box scale tool. And we have a couple of options. So we can set the pivot position. I will just set this to the bottom of the bound and box on the Y axis. And once we've done that, we can adjust the scale with the inputs here at the top. It would be nice if all these values were linked for a uniform scale, but they're not. And what these values actually represent is the size of the bound and box wrapped around this object. So say for some reason we wanted this object to only be one meter on the Y axis. We can just type that here. And now based on the bound and box, we have squished the mesh on the Y axis to exactly one meter of units or whatever your Maya scene is set to. Currently, as I said, this is squished. So we can now copy the scale value to keep everything uniform. So just like this onto the X and Z. And doing that, you can now see that it has been scaled proportionally. Of course, you could force the mesh into whatever scale of bound and box you wanted. This is a great way to scale objects you don't necessarily have the transform history for, but you do know the dimensions you want it to be. Next, let's just go over the duplicate object on components bonus tool. Here we have this cylindrical component and a screw. Say we wanted to place a bunch of screws around the border here. We can actually do that quite easily with this tool. Let's go ahead and open up the tool, head up to bonus tools, edit, duplicate on object. With the screw or whatever object selected, hold down the right mouse button on the second object and go into a component mode. In this example, I'm just going to use face. And then I will just go ahead and shift select some faces. And these are going to be the ones I want to duplicate onto. For now, we can just leave the duplicate mode to copy and let's just leave it to just orient. Cool. So now we get a copy on each of the selected components. And if you want to make any adjustments, you can select all the duplicated objects and in object space, make changes to the transforms. Anyways, if I go ahead and undo that and change the duplicate mode to instance and just duplicate them again onto the same face selection, you can see that now if we make changes to any of the meshes, that's now going to be instanced across all the duplicates. Another nice thing is we can change the method. So we just tried selected, but what if we changed it to random? Sometimes doing this causes the tool to shut, but it seems we're okay this time. Once we've switched the mode to random, you can see we get more options and we can specify the number of copies and what components we want to randomly distribute across. So let's just select verts and edges too. Shift select the object and hit the replicate object button. This can be a nice way to randomly scatter objects onto any component of another object. I think that pretty much wraps up everything. Another handy tool to know about is the pattern rename tool. We can get to this tool by heading up to bonus tools, windows, pattern rename. If you haven't got any objects or things populated in the menu, all you need to do is select some stuff and hit reload on the tool. I'm just going to go ahead and turn off path names and namespaces to just clean up how things are going to be displayed for us here. This tool is very dynamic. For example, if I type my cool object matching how it is in the outliner just into this search field and let's just leave the replace empty and hit add to list. See, we're getting a preview of the new name before we make any real changes to the scene. Let's also remove object test as well. And so now in the preview, we're just left with some underscores. So what we can do now is replace these. So two underscores, and we can replace that with, I don't know, test underscore. And hit add to list to make that change. 
Once we're happy with the resulting names, go ahead and hit rename here down at the bottom. And you can see here in the outliner that our cubes have been renamed exactly how we have configured here in the tool. When working on environments, for example, something handy to have up is the bonus clip and plane tool. This tool is super simple to use and can be a nice way to adjust your camera's clip and plane in a more intuitive UI. We can get to this tool by heading up to bonus tools, display, adjust clip and planes. You can see we get two sliders, which we can adjust to change our camera's clip and planes. I think the tool is quite self explanatory. I do have a further tutorial on clip and planes, which I made a while ago, which you can check out. A nice simple tool, and what I like is we can just leave the UI down in the corner for easy access for whilst we're working. Finally, let's cover the translate rotate mirror tool. If we go ahead and head up to bonus tools, modify mirror translate slash rotation values, you can see it's a rather simple tool. We have the mirror axis and also the attributes we want to include. If we have an object with obscure values like we do here, see we have a lot of rotation values on this object. This would be hard to mirror without scaling or something and that's something you don't always want to do. This tool is great because it can intelligently figure out what the new value should be so no history is lost. So what we can do is say mirror across the Z axis, just the rotation and you can see it flips the object converting the attributes as need be. And here you can see it's mirroring locally, kind of on its own axis. But if we want to go ahead and turn on the translation, it will also mirror the translations across whichever axis we have set. This can be handy if we want to flip a bunch of objects. So if we go ahead and zoom out a bit, you can see we have a lot of objects here. We could group them, center the pivot and scale to a negative value which would most likely do the trick. But with this tool, it's so easy and it calculates all the new attributes perfectly and without the need to change any of the object's hierarchies or grouping. I hope you found this video on five useful my bonus tools helpful. Be sure to join the Discord server to chat with a great community of fellow modelers and check out my Patreon for access to the members only chat and a whole bunch of assets and tools. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you did, hit the like and subscribe buttons, come chat with me on the Discord, and I'll see you in the next video.